Hey folks, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I want to walk through a step-by-step -step process of one that I take when it comes to editing drums using flex time. You know, as, as I've engaged with various readers of the blog and as I look around on forums, I find that there's a lot of confusion around editing with flex time and getting the results that you want out of flex time. There's either a group of people who just, they're not sure how to accomplish that and they're having a hard time. And then there's another group of people who just are very insistent that flex time doesn't sound good. It's not adequate. It's just not a good option for editing. And I think that is total BS and I think flex time is awesome. Flex time is fantastic for editing. It's fantastic for drum editing. And it really just comes down to knowing the steps that you need to take that are you know, they're tedious in their administrative tasks, but will set you up for success. So let's walk through that real quick. In this particular case, I have seven drum tracks here, starting with overheads, kick drum, snare drum, and all the usual suspects that come with a drum kit. And the first thing you have to do, the first step when it comes to editing anything that's been tracked with more than one microphone, is that you have to group your tracks together. The point of grouping is so you can make edits and that edit will take place across all of the tracks at the exact same spot. This is super, super important. So let's just walk through grouping here. To do that, I select the first track of my drums, go down to the bottom, hold shift, hit the bottom track, and now everything from the overheads to this uh, bottom snare mic has been highlighted. I go into the mixer. And there's a field here called group right below the output and above the automation. And I just select the first open group. The group dialog will open. I'll name this drum flex. And then I'm going to go into the settings for this particular group. So this is important to set up. You you set up your group here, but you need to let Logic know that you are planning to edit these drum tracks as a group. So I start by enabling editing selection, which means now when I make any sort of selection with my kit, it's going to make that selection across the whole group. So if I decide that this is not necessary and I hit delete, it's deleted it at the same exact spot for all of these drum tracks. So let's bring that back. The other setting that you are going to have to enable specifically for flex time is quantize locked audio and what's going to happen here is is when we enable flex mode and we start to move drum transients around like say i want to take this and i want to nudge it a little closer to 75 this one a little closer to whatever the closest marker that would be for that you want these flex edits to be exactly the same and be moved around exactly the same for all these tracks so if i want to move around a kick drum hit I want that same spot of that transient to be moved on the snare track, on the rack tom, on the floor tom, etc. This is super, super important. The reason is because anytime you record an instrument with more than one microphone, that instrument is interwoven and interlocked between the microphones. Even though the overheads may have picked up the snare drum hit a little later than the snare mic, and the kick drum mic may have picked it up later or sooner, who knows. They're interwoven. They're all tied together by time. So if I go in and I move a snare hit on just the snare track but not on any other track, what's going to happen is my drums are going to sound phasey. They're going to sound weird because the phase relationship, the time relationship, this delicate balance between these microphones has been disrupted and messed up. And it's going to make your drum sound terrible. So it's important to enable these two settings before you do anything regarding editing with flex time. The next step is that you need to pick your cue reference tracks. As you can see, there's a cue button on all my tracks. If I disable the group, it disappears, enable with shift G, and it comes back. So cue reference means essentially that logic, you're telling logic that Certain tracks are the guide tracks. These are the most important tracks that you want to base all your flex mode editing off of. 
most drummers play the kick and the snare the most out of any other drum in the kit. So I disable the cue reference for the overheads, the rack tom, the floor tom, and the bottom snare mic here. Now, just so you're not worried, Flex will find those, you know, tom hits, it'll find the other transients, but it's just basically going to treat the kick and the snare as the most important tracks and sort of cross-reference its analysis so you don't have, you know, two or three times more flex markers than you need. So now that I've enabled cue referencing for kick and snare and remove the other ones, I'm going to disable the group and I'm going to do a little administrative work regarding the transients on the kick and snare tracks. I'm going to double click the kick. This is going to open the track editor. I'm going to go over to the file editor and then I'm going to go to audio file, detect transients. And what this is going to do is logic is going to analyze the track and it's going to put these zero, excuse me, these orange lines everywhere that there is a transient, transient meaning kick drum hit. So as you can see, there's a line for each hit. If you're recording a drummer who maybe was is not super consistent in terms of dynamics, you know, starts to play really loud and really quiet, it's kind of all over the place, the kick or snare track may pick up when you do this sort of analysis, other hits that are not the kick and snare. So you have an opportunity to go through and fine tune, say this is not actually a kick hit, I can double click this line and get rid of that line. So later when flex is turned on, it won't interpret that as a kick hit or vice versa. Say that I got rid of this and say I'm moving along and oh, this is a kick hit. This should be considered. Well, I use T to open my tool menu. I set my command click tool to pencil. So when I hold command, it turns into a pencil and you can add a marker with the pencil tool. One other note regarding the kick drum. Let's take a look here. Let's see if this one shows us. Okay, not that one. Okay, as you can see, this transient marker is somewhere in the midst of the actual transient. It's not before the transient at the zero crossing. It's sort of in the middle of the transient. And this is my one beef with flex time. I think flex time is awesome. This is my one thing that I don't like about it is logic when it analyzes for flex markers and transients, it'll sometimes place these transient markers in the middle of a transient instead of the beginning of the transient. It's sort of a bummer because what will happen is, is you will go through, you'll lock your kick drum in with the grid. The grid is based off the BPM or the tempo. You're going to lock it in. You'll be like, okay, this sounds fantastic. Let's bounce. And you'll bounce and you'll have pops and clicks all over your kick drums. Uh, I haven't found this so much for snare, maybe floor tom, but especially kick drums, there will be pops and clicks all over the place and it's super annoying. And what you have to do is, is you have to go up to edit, make sure snap edits to zero crossings is enabled. And then I just go through from the first hit down to the last hit, it takes a little time. And we just click it once and it finds the closest zero crossing at the beginning of the transient. So it takes a little bit of setup time, but you can have all these transient markers at the beginning of the transient. So when you go to edit and correct the performance, you won't have pops and clicks. Very important. So then I would do the same thing for the snare. So you can see all the transients, detect transients. Okay. Looks good. And then just assume I've gone through and I've decided, oh, okay, like this isn't a snare hit, so let's get rid of it. Or this is a snare hit, so let's bring it in. Okay, now all my transient activity has been corrected or finessed. Let us turn on flex time. Okay, this is very important and ensure that you turn on the group before you do anything with flex time. This is super important. The mode we're going to use is slicing. You're not going to use monophonic. You're not going to use rhythmic, polyphonic, or anything else. Slicing is designed for drum editing. This is the algorithm you want to use. Otherwise, it's going to sound phasey or weird or you're going to have glitches. So I'm going to turn on slicing. And Logic has very quickly analyzed all the transients across the drum tracks using the kick and the snare as the reference. Okay, so let's find the busiest section of this drum track. 
as you can see, there's a lot of markers. But I'll start from the first hit down to the last hit and manually correct the drums. I will listen and then I will move stuff around by hand to lock it all into place. I know that sounds time consuming. I agree with you. It is time consuming, but I've found with the drummers that I work with, they tend to be drummers who are not seasoned studio musicians. They're good. They're really good, but they're not used to hearing a click track banging around in their headphones all the time. They're not used to being like really meticulously trying to lock in with a grid. So they drift and they drift ahead of the tempo and behind. And what I found is a drummer may drift a little too far out of the tempo. And if you just hard quantize them, logic doing the best that it can to figure out which beats and bars are the most are the closest and most important to those hits, it'll place hits in the wrong places occasionally, sometimes a lot because the drummer is way out of time. And it's like, a, if I have to go through and fix everything anyways, I might as well do this by hand and make sure that's done right the first time. So I'll listen. Right? And then I will just start moving stuff around to the hit the bars that they need to correspond with and, oh. and I just drag using the top of the bar because if you start at the bottom you're going to have three lines pop up like that and I don't want that I want to drag it one at a time right let's hear that And that sounds great. And I'll go through, like I said, beginning to end. Now, when it comes to stuff like fills, I will be very careful about fills. Like tom hits, that's fine. If a tom hit is just sort of punctuating and accenting at certain spots, I will lock those into place. Um, if a cymbal is kind of keeping time in a part, I'll lock that into place. But when it comes to like a snare roll that's ramping up and there's a lot of nuance in it, I might lock in the first hit of this of the snare roll and the last hit but not so much the stuff in between because you can really ruin the humanity of a snare roll doing that or any sort of fill so i say when it comes to fills be judicious and careful about how you edit them now let's say that this is a drummer that is fantastic you know is very seasoned knows what they're doing and they're pretty well locked in then you can go up to the region inspector here for all six selected, you can go to this quantize option and select the note value that is right for your session. So let's hear a part and then I'll quantize it and we'll hear it after. All right, let's do 16th notes. Okay, there's a little bit of a glitch in there. So that would be something I would fix. Right, kind of drag that along. Let's see how that sounds. And that's fine. And if you're confident in that drummer and you think that there's going to be very few things you're going to have to go through and correct, go ahead, quantize. But I say definitely listen to the whole performance, double check that everything sounds in time. It will require some human intervention. That's just the nature of automatic processes. You know, Logic does the best it can, and it's fantastic, but it's not perfect, right? It's analyzing a lot and trying to figure out a lot all at one time. So a parting thought for you at the end of this video here is what you put in is what you get out. Garbage in, garbage out, awesome in, awesome out. If you have a terrible drummer, and I, and I say that as compassionately as I can, if you have a terrible drummer who can't keep time, who can't play to a click, who just is not very good. I mean, you try and try as you may, it's going to sound bad trying to edit them into place. Like Logic has fantastic algorithms for editing, but it can only do so much. And if you got to take a snare and kick hit that are sitting right on top of each other and you have to stretch this kick hit, say like way back here in the snare hit way over here, Logic's going to do what it can, but eventually there's going to be glitches. There's going to be weird mechanical digital sounds because you're stretching things way beyond proportion for drum editing. It's just a fact. So my suggestion to you is, is work with good drummers. You know, maybe this drummer is a really nice guy and he's, you know, and you love him to death 
or her, but they're just not good. So do the best you can. If you have to work with a drummer that is not particularly awesome in that particular case, you're going to have to make concessions with your flex edits. My suggestion is try to flex with as few flex markers as you can. Try to, try to do as much as you can in terms of editing, but with the fewest amount of markers possible so you're not pulling and stretching things like all over the place because you're going to end up getting that glitchy sound and it's going to make you think, wow, flex is no good, but it's awesome. It's just what you put into flex is what matters. So I hope that was helpful to you. Again, as I say at the end of every video, if this was helpful, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or go on the website, whylogicprorules.com, subscribe on the site. Every week I post material. Every week, my only goal is to add value to your logic life. Thank you so much.